Hey guys, if you're a mid-level player with stats ranging from 40s to 70s, and you're looking for some new ways to make some money, then this is the guide for you. I have four different money-making methods to go over, but before I do, I wanna let you guys know that I recently started streaming on YouTube, so if you are interested in catching a stream, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you'll know when I go live. I usually stream in the evenings, and I will be streaming the day this uploads, so I hope to see you all there. The first two methods I'll be going over is something I highly recommend every low and middle level player do. The first one is getting your daily Vizwax. This method, it only requires level 50 rune crafting, and you'll want a variety of runes in your bank. This is something you can prepare for in free to play even, so when you do get member, you can start getting your Vizwax every day for profit. This method can only be done once per day, um, but it only takes about two minutes to complete. Vizwax used to be a bit more valuable and more profit per hour, but it is still a great money maker and can make you around one mil per day. All you need to do is go to the Runecrafting Guild at the top of the Wizard's Tower. You can get here easily by using the Wicked Hood Teleport. You want to then enter the Runecrafting Guild and go to the Rune Goldberg Machine. Here you're required to input three different runes. Each day the best combination of runes will change. But you can search Rune Goldberg Machine on the wiki to find out the guaranteed best rune slot for slot 1, and also one of the three best possible combinations for slot 2. For the third slot, you won't know what the best rune is to use unless you activate your rune crafting skill cape, which of course requires level 99 rune crafting. Otherwise, you'll have to guess. Um, you'll just want to try some combinations until you get a good amount of Vizwax, like 80 to 100, and also try to use some cheaper runes as well. You'll want to avoid using Dust, Mist, and Steam runes since these are quite expensive and you can actually lose money by using them. So just make sure you are using the cheaper runes. You can then hit Combine and you will create your Vizwax. Now making one mil per day isn't really awesome, but it does add up over time. So if you do do it every day, then eventually you'll have a pretty nice amount of Vizwax that you can sell for some pretty good profit and hopefully buy that piece of gear that you're saving up for. Second on the list is the other daily in the guide and it's doing your herb farm runs. These are extremely profitable. There are quite a few unlocks that make it a lot more profitable, but you will end up working towards those. I recommend having at least 14 farming so you can farm Marantil. They are pretty good profit uh, and they have the lowest farming level. You can see on screen, this is a list of some of the better herbs to plant, Lantodime being the best one, uh, followed by Dwarf Weed, Spirit Weed, uh, Torsal, Toad Flax, and then Marantil. So just pick one of those, um, basically depending on your farming level. There are a lot of different unlocks that are helpful when you are farming, but they aren't necessary. You'll still make pretty good profit without any of them, but you'll also be working towards obtaining them the more herb runs you do. So first off, you will want to make sure you are using super compost or ultra compost on all your herb patches. You can just buy this off the grand exchange and it makes it so your herb patches have less chance of getting a disease, but you also grow more herbs, which just essentially uh, boosts your profit. Now, if you do have fairy tale part one, uh, the growing pains quest completed, you will have the magic executors, which helps you gather more herbs. If you don't have that. That's something you would want to get. So put that quest on your list to get the magic executors. Um, it is a pretty early game quest. You can also buy a juju farming potions for a chance at picking more herbs. It gives you a 33% chance at getting an extra herb. So that's just extra profit as well. Um, the Green Fingers Aura, it is a uh, or something that can be bought with loyalty points at the loyalty point store. It does give you a 15% chance to uh, get an extra herb. Now that is if you have the legendary Green Fingers Aura, but any of them do work. It will boost your chance. Since I have the farming outfit and the farming cape, I use that too, but it's not required. It just helps collect more herbs faster. So all these unlocks, they are helpful. You don't need them right now. You're still going to make profit, um, but it is something you'll want to try and get going forward. Now, the most impactful unlock to have is the plant power unlock through Sidex shop north of Alcarid. This allows you to plant additional seeds at once, which gives you more herbs when you harvest. 
you will need to complete quite a few herb runs to accumulate enough points to unlock all four tiers of plant power. So this is just something you'll end up being able to unlock after so many herb runs, um, and it will definitely boost your profit a ton. Once you have your farming preset made with all the helpful unlocks that you currently have, you will want to have a pretty good route set up to get to all of your herb patches effectively, especially if you are using the Juju farming potion. If you are a newer player or a mid-level player, then you should have access to all six of these herb patches. There are two more. There's one in Trollheim and also one in Priftinus. However, those have some more requirements to them, so you may not have access. So personally, when I go and do my herb run, I start off at Port Phasmatis. I teleport there using the Ectophile, which you get from the Ghost Ahoy quest. I then go to Catherby with the Catherby Lodestone, and then Ardone with the Ardone Lodestone. I then go south of Falador. It's also sort of in Port Serum. Uh, and I use the Explorer's Ring 3 for this. So that's actually a reward from the, uh, the Hard Lumbridge Diaries. Then I go north of Al Karid using the Mystical Sand Seed. It teleports you right next to the Herb Patch. So that one's awesome. And then I use my Wilderness Sword 4. Uh, Wilderness Sword 1 also works. It's the Wilderness Achievements. Uh, and then it teleports you straight to the Herb Patch in the Wilderness. Uh, that is the only herb patch you can do bloodweed seeds, but you can also plant any uh, herb that you want. So uh, that's uh, another pretty good one to do, especially if you have your PvP turned off. And so I won't go through all of it. Basically, just plant your herbs and go harvest them uh, whenever you want, but they do grow in about 80 minutes. And if you do that a few times a day, you'll actually become quite rich. Like if you did it every day for a month and did maybe a few of them a day, you easily have over 100 million in herbs if you have all those unlocks. The next method is gathering Zamorak Molners. This method is a pretty unique money-making method and can make you up to 20 mil per hour if you can do it fast enough. Uh, it does have some requirements to it, but they are fairly low level. Uh, the downside about this method is that you don't get any XP, um, but you can make really good GP per hour. So let's get into the requirements. So now looking at the requirements and recommendations for this money making method. First off, required is making history quests. So you do need that quest completed along with the meeting history quest. And then once you have these two quests completed, you can complete the enchanted key mini quest. Basically, there is going to be 22 different locations that you will need to gather treasure from using the enchanted key. It actually does take a little bit of time to complete this mini quest, but once it is completed, you can then go ahead and get the Zamorak Milnors. As for the recommended items, you will want the Clan Vexillum. This allows you to teleport to the Clan Camp, which is going to be a step towards getting the Zamorak Molder. A Ring of Dueling is really helpful as well. You can buy them on the Grand Exchange. You'll be able to teleport to Het's Oasis using the Ring of Dueling, which is where you will get the Zamorak Molners. The Archaeology Journal is also pretty helpful. It will teleport you to the first location where you will be able to get the Guthix Molner. And of course, Bladed Dive and Double Surge are helpful since it will allow you to move around a little bit faster and complete these runs just a little bit quicker. Now, the Zamorak Molners, you're probably wondering why they are worth so much money. Right now, they're listed at over 300k on the Grand Exchange and selling for right around 280k. Now, they are worth so much because, as you can see, they have a 1 in 4 chance at disassembling into Zamorak components. If you don't know, Zamorak components are highly valuable. They're used to get perks like devoted impatient and imp souls so it is a really valuable component for a lot of players which is why the zamorak molners have a pretty high value now as for the gear setup as you can see i am using full archaeology outfit it isn't really needed but it will allow you to teleport to the archaeology campus just like the archaeology journal uh, the key essential items is that clan vaxillum uh, the Traveler's Necklace, the Ring of Dueling, and of course the Archaeology Journal. You will want to have both a manhand and an offhand equipped so you can use Bladed Dive as well. 
And in the inventory, you will want some spare rings of dueling, traveler's necklace. You can also bring some acceleration power bursts. This will allow you to refresh the surge cooldown whenever you need it. And then also just bring a spade, some magic note paper, and you can bring a noted Zamorak Molnar if you want. Now, in terms of the steps, you probably are aware of how it works, especially if you have completed the Enchanted Key mini quest. But step one is going to be to talk to Joral at the outpost. You can teleport to the outpost using the Traveler's Necklace. Now, you will want to make sure that you drop all of your Molners before talking to Joral. Um, this will allow you to enable the chat options. So if you drop them and talk to them, you will be able to select the option two and then one and that will get you the enchanted key so you can go hunt for more. Step two is to dig for the Guthix Molnar. Now here you will want to teleport to the archeology span campus. Now to get here, it is a little bit of a run so you will want to use Surge. There is an ideal spot to use it which you will see when I go through a walkthrough of this method. And you'll want to dig under the tree in this picture. This is where you will get the Guthix Molnar so you can move on to the next step. You can drop or disassemble the Guthix Molnar since it is worthless basically and you will need to drop it at some point or get rid of it to get a new enchanted key. Step three is collecting the Ceridomen Molnar. So after you get that Guthix Molnar, you can use the Clan Vaxillum to teleport to the Clan Camp. Now you can disassemble or drop the Ceridomen Molnar as well. It will give you the Ceridomen component, so I do recommend disassembling it. Um, and as you can see, I have circled it on red where you will want to dig. And I'll be showing you in the walkthrough as well. Now step number four is going to be getting the Zamrock Molnar. Things to know, you will want to use the Ring of Dueling to teleport to the Hats Oasis. From here, you can run a little bit northwest to the circle on screen. Um, as you can see, you will be able to get the Zamrock Molnar here by digging in this location. And then you can use the magic note paper on that to note it. And then you can move on to the final step, which is basically just to repeat all of them. So again, drop the Molners and talk to Joral. You will be able to select the option two, then one, and you will get the enchanted key back again to repeat all of these steps. So now I'll go through a quick walkthrough just to show you each step actually in game. So first step is to drop the molars that you have and talk to Joral, select the option two, then one. Then you'll teleport to the archeology span campus using your archeology span journal and go to the next dig location, which is right next to this tree here. Um, then you can dig. You can also put the spade on your action bar. That way you can dig just using a keybind as well. The next step is going to the clan camp using the clan Vexilum and digging in the location right here. So that will get you the Guthix and the Ceridomen Molnar. The next step is going to get the Zamorak Molnar, which is right next to the Summoning Obelisk. Um, so you can dig here and you'll get that one. Then again, you can go back to the outpost. You'll need to drop your Molners, and then you can talk to Joral again and select the option two and one and get the enchanted key. So you will just want to repeat this over and over and keep on collecting these Zamorak Molners. It isn't a super exciting method and there's no XP to it, but you do make a lot of GP per hour. Right now it is around 20 mil GP per hour profit, which is actually really great for a low or mid-level account. Now for the fourth moneymaker, we have a crafting moneymaking method, which is crafting earth battle staffs. So this only requires level 58 crafting, so a fairly mid-level requirement. Uh, the nice thing about this method is that it does make you around 6 mil per hour, but you also do get about 300k crafting XP per hour. So you are progressing your account while also making some money. So that is, I, I think this is much better than the Molnir method. Although you can make 20 mil per hour, you weren't progressing your account at all. So doing this, it is quite nice because you're getting that 300k XP. Another tip, you want to go to the portable world, world 84. 
Basically, people put portables up everywhere in Fort 4 and 3, so I would suggest going there, uh, and you can just uh, do your crafting. What you'll need is a battle staff and an earth orb. You should be able to craft around 2,000 to 2,500 of these per hour, um, so I would buy enough for you to do however long you would want to uh, do this method. Basically, the battle staffs, they cost around 4.2k, whereas the earth orbs cost about 200 GP. And uh, then when you craft the earth battle staffs, they are worth 7k. So you're making about 2,500 coins profit every time you're crafting a battle staff. And another thing you can do with these, if you do want to alk the earth battle staffs, they alk for 9.3k. So there really isn't any way of losing money with this method. You're going to be buying the supplies for quite cheap, uh, crafting them, getting some really good XP. And then even if for some reason no one bought them on the Grand Exchange, you can just alk them for even more profit, which is why they are worth what they're worth. Uh, so if you have an alchemizer even uh, with invention, you can toss it in there um, and basically make a bit more profit than the six mil per hour. Um, but it's really as easy as that. I guess one huge tip is to use the new feature where you can right click the bank chest and load your last preset. It's a huge time saver. So I highly recommend you guys do that. Um, but that's basically it. It's a pretty simple method. Um, going to get you some XP and pretty good GP per hour as well. So it's a really good one for a mid-level account. And so those are all the methods I have for you guys in this video. I really hope you found it helpful and that one of these methods will be useful for you. Again, I do wanna give a shout out to my channel. Uh, I am gonna be streaming uh, later today, the day of upload. And I also am gonna be streaming a few times a week, at least that's the plan. So if you are interested, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on. We're going to be doing some PVM and uh, probably some PVM with chat. So it's going to be a ton of fun and I hope to see you all there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.